Hi, welcome to our Quick Wins Conversation Series. I'm Stephen Walters with my co-host, Troy Heiner. What's up, winners? Hey, Troy. Today, we have a special guest, Laura DiCarlo. Laura is an award-winning resume writer and former university placement director who's earned over 20 certifications in resume writing, career coaching, and business development. Now, Laura is also the author of Resumes for Dummies. This is pretty cool. I've seen this book on the shelves quite a bit. So Laura also is the author of Interviewing the Gold Standard, Turn All of Your Interviews into Gold. But today we're going to focus mostly on resumes. But let me tell you some other things about Laura real quick. She's also been featured in 20 resume writing books. I think she's special. I think she's got some really valuable information for you. <laughs> With three decades in the career service and resume writing world, there it is right there. These days, Laura can be found training and certifying resume writers and career coaches through the Global Professional Association, Career Directors International. You're going to hear more from her on that in a little bit. Speaking of where's Laura, here she is. Hey, guys. Hi, Hi Laura. Thanks for, thanks for being with us today. Glad to be here. Excited. Great. So, awesome. Laura, it does sound like you do a whole lot more in that short little bio I gave on you. Do you want to give us a little more information on that? Well, I'm mostly very excited to be a guest today because I'm pretty passionate about new graduates and students pursuing their job search. A lot of times they get some really bad advice, which is you're the best person to write your own resume, but you're also the person most likely to take yourself for granted. Um, but you can learn how to do it right versus just thinking you're going to put just your responsibilities. So bottom line, I've spent a lot of my career focusing on new graduates and career changers. Um, pretty pleased to say that in the seven years I was a university placement director, my, um, my campus had the top placement rates out of 11 campuses in two countries. Wow. And it's because I look at resumes differently than most people do when they're thinking about you know, I got this degree or I took these courses or I got the certificates um, and I want to change careers or start a career. Uh, it can be really, really easy to just take for granted and assume what your audience knows. And we've got some really cool tricks and tips and strategies to make it more effective. That is, that's really cool. Hey, the first thing I think we should talk about is what is a resume? Now, when my students say, what's a resume to you? My idea of a resume is something that represents you when you're not there to represent yourself. But Laura, I think you can go beyond that. Oh, sure. So a resume is, and this is how you really need to think about this document, whether it's a virtual you know, thing that you never print out because you're just sending it online, or if you're actually toting it right into a job fair, say at the campus, mm -hmm. but you need to think of it as a marketing tool. A resume literally is, it's your advertisement for yourself. You need to start thinking of yourself as you incorporated. You've got a product to sell. Um, you might have a similar skill set to the other products that are on the market, but you need to convince the employer why your product is possibly better, faster, smarter, or has just better overall customer service. So in your one to two page document, and that's if you're in the US, if you're not in the US, you can have potentially a lot longer resume, or if you're in a scientific field um, or uh, a professor, which I know we don't have any professors coming straight out of um, school, but they tend to have a longer different document than what I'm going to be talking about here today. But so in your one to two page document, you're looking to sell yourself. You are looking to target to a particular job, not, hey, here's all my qualifications. I hope you find a match but here is why I'm a perfect fit for what I saw you advertising or as close to a perfect fit as I can make myself look in one to two pages with the right keywords, the right targeting, um, and how you share what you have done in the past, whether it's jobs, classes, um, volunteer work, other areas of your life, even personal self-study, um, how you showcase all of that to make somebody go, I got to talk to that person. That's pretty right. cool. I always tell, so Troy, you did a lot of internship work. What did you, right. did you incorporate? I can't talk today. Incorporate a lot of that with what Laura was saying into your interns. Right. Yeah. So, 
I mean, um, in my working with the government, it was a government internship program. We liked longer interviews because we were in an agency that liked data. So more data was better. But I think to your point, Laura, what if you put like the entire, you know, alphabet soup kitchen sink version of yourself on that page, everything gets watered down and you don't really represent yourself well. So so it does become, you know, how do you strategize? How do you how do you how do you put the most important stuff right up front so people really get the true essence of what makes you unique and and the perfect fit for that opportunity? Um, and that's the same advice that I was giving for people who are, we had kind of had our own promotion process where you basically had to write an internal resume and staff it around and have people, you know, vote whether you were a, a good candidate for, for promotion and for advancement. So a lot of internal resume writing was, was being done at my agency and the same, and the same, um, guidance that you were given goes for that kind of stuff is, you know, how do you represent yourself, um, quickly and and get to that core essence of what makes you unique what makes you special what makes you the best qualified candidate and the best fit for that opportunity yes interesting very interesting stuff sounds like a cat's trying to join us <laughs> we took care of the dogs but not the cats all right that's kind of funny she always has to make her debut in every live event i do that's great. <laughs> that's, that's great so it's not really a mistake it's just a guess so speaking of mistakes what are three of the biggest mistakes that you see people make on their resumes other than name address phone number <laughs> it's gonna be really hard for me to keep it to three i'll be honest with you well let's hear um, them let's, yeah. let's go through them yeah giving it giving it some thought i think that's uh the biggest mistake i see people make is what you know what troy was just saying about trying to put the whole the kitchen sink in um they're trying to be oh i don't want to miss out on, a, on an opportunity maybe you know maybe somebody will see me for this or that and i just got to put everything i've ever done in it um and that actually can over qualify you for positions right. it can make it look like you don't know what you want to do and as right as it waters down your presentation so I did want to build on what Troy said a second ago, and I am I, I have no problem with creating a kitchen sink resume. In fact, in resumes for dummies and when I used to run the placement program and work with students, my goal was to do what I call busting blank page syndrome. And mm -hmm. that is you get everything down. Um, and right. we were using Microsoft Word that's still pretty much the standard for resume writing. Um, but you just, you got everything in there and you created what I call a master or core resume. Right. Um, and then you could save different versions of that targeted to the jobs you applied for. And, you know, you wouldn't really use that kitchen sink resume unless, for instance, you were uh, going for going to a job fair where there might be different opportunities or you were giving it to somebody who was going to network it into a company for you. So. In general, though, the biggest mistake is trying to have a one size fits all resume. And then right. it's like you're just standing on the side of the road saying, hire me. And other candidates are going in with a, here's why I'm a perfect fit. Um, right. Another one that I see happening all the time is the typos. Um, oh, yes. And I get really upset when I hear job seekers saying, uh, they get pissed off about this. I hear a lot of talk when I write about it and they'll be like, well, you know, it's, it's human. Everybody makes mistakes. And I'm like, okay, if you were doing say a chemical process in your job and everything had to be, you know, done to the milligram or I don't, obviously I'm not a scientist. So I'm, there's probably some small quantity I should be using here, but there is microgram. No, <laughs> I was just thinking that, yeah. Milligram versus microgram, yeah. There is like zero room for error. And if you're going to send in a resume that has a typo in it, um, you're waving a flag in front of an employer to me that says, um, yeah, if I can't even get it right about myself, right. I bet I'm not going to get it right when I'm doing a quality job for you. So, uh, get help proofreading your resume. That should be something you're always using a second person for. And 
the worst thing I've ever seen in terms of, uh, and you you kind of mentioned this, Stephen, a second ago, was somebody having a typo in their phone number or their email address. Oh my God, <laughs> this is just beyond terrible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Another one that makes me just worry so much for people is that they don't understand the whole keyword uh, requirements in resumes today. You know, right. we're, we're trying to create one document that's targeted to the job that three potentially very different audiences might look at um, and weigh in on and make decisions on whether you're going for it or not. So your resume has got to be able to show someone. And I always say, think of the 20 something gum popping person who's got all these resumes in front of them and they had to decide and in 10 seconds, whether they're seeing enough things in your resume to put you in the maybe pile. Mm -hmm. um, so is there keywords? Have you targeted that resume? Keywords, when I say that, I mean a two to three column section is what I favor near the top of a resume. But somebody can just look at it and in seconds they can go, yeah, this person mm -hmm. at least has the basic skills we're looking for. So this is almost when, when people are looking at resumes, I was telling them you're one of 500 or one of a thousand, and maybe there's 20 people or even a digital process that it's going through looking, you know, excluding out, per, you know, typos, typos, throw away. It doesn't even matter who they are. Gone, 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 gone. And they get that pile down, 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 down. And then they get to the hardcore ones. Then yep. it's almost like a thumbnail search through YouTube. You know, what do I want to look at? Yeah. You know, is the name small? Is the name big? Some people like really small names. I'm like, why would you do that? Why well, don't like my name? It doesn't matter what you like. You like money, right? You want a paycheck, right? <laughs> you got to tell them your name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, right. and you're, you're segueing right into my number four and the final one I'll talk oh, about, perfect. which is, so on one hand, you got to have those keywords in there just so you can have the fail safe of, I hit the right keywords for that human person, or I hit the right keywords for that applicant tracking system or other scanning system they might right. use to mm -hmm. look for matches. But then, as you were just saying, what have you done to stand out from the competition? Now that you're in this smaller pile, which you can pretty much be assured are all people who have the basic, at least they appear to have the basic qualifications for the job. I'm not going to talk to all 40 of those. Most likely, I'm going to pick the ones that stand out to me as my top two, three, five, ten, and interview them. Mm -hmm. And that's not just skills. That is um asking yourself not just what responsibilities i held but how i might have improved things how i um saved money made money um added quality and yes those things can appear in when we're talking about school projects that we did and when we're talking about uh internships that we had there are ways to bring those sorts of things to life. So we can't just have the excuse of, well, I'm just starting my career. How can I have challenges, actions, and results? Right. Yeah. So that's the same advice that I give people is, you know, where have you been able to exhibit those, those innate skills, strengths, and abilities in a job setting or even outside of a job setting? There are certain things that people are innately and inherently good at that they develop over the course of their life and their career, highlight those because those are the things that are going to allow you to excel in any situation. And those are the things that are probably going to give you the most job satisfaction if you find a job that allows you to do those things. Mm -hmm. So that should be the headline or, or, or the, the main pitch of your pitch for getting that job is this is the stuff I really am good at and I enjoy doing. And if your company has this kind of opportunity, I'm the right person for that opportunity. Like that spin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, that absolutely makes sense. So speaking of spin, I think of the word strategies and that makes me think of what are the different resume strategies for, let's say early career people, just let's say, just getting out of high school or just getting out of college versus somebody mid career, which I guess what 30 to 50 if that's a proper age range? I, I would say I would divide them up personally between um, those who 
have very limited work experience. Maybe it's all the majority of their experiences is academic and maybe a few small jobs. Um, so you, I, I just kind of put them in new grads, whether it's high school or college. Um, and then uh, mid-career, I would just call those any people who um, already have a career. You already have work experience. Uh, yep. and if they become career changers, then they almost pretty much flip into our new graduate pile and some of the, the strategies they right. use. So um, the, I'll, I'll talk about the, the mid-career, the people who already have careers first, because it's a lot easier uh, for them, because it's a much more direct path of, I have this experience, and now I need to show a prospective employer that I am a match. And that's as simple right. as, um, you know, making sure, as Troy said, you're leading your resume. Again, what I said, targeting, but you're leading your targeting. resume yeah. with, it's, it's often, sometimes it's a format of a paragraph and new grads are going to do this too, but they're just going to do some things differently. Um, but that paragraph's easier to write or the bullet points you put at the top are easier to write because you've looked at a job description, you've looked at yourself, and now you can play up what you excel at, what you're best at, where you've been known to shine. You can even throw some kind of next level cool things to do. You can put a testimonial up there from a prior boss or a customer or I'm changing lanes here, a professor. Um, you can have, as I did for my husband when he made a career change, you could have a personal philosophy statement. Um, mm -hmm. There I like a, personal philosophy statements. Yeah. I didn't know you could yeah. put that in a resume. I thought exactly. that maybe went in the inquiry letter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly, certainly want some sort of objective up there, right? Because it's like, um, you know, well, if your objective is right, yeah, right. So, it's not just to get a job. It's to get a job to do what? What kind of value are you bringing to the company that's providing this opportunity to you, right? What do you intend to, you know, it's, it, you know, kind of segueing to like interview type stuff, right? Where do you see yourself in five years, right? That's a typical interview question, right? You kind of want to say, I intend to come into that position and excel and achieve certain things, right? With this opportunity. And, you know, that should be somehow crafted in that headline, that objective, that philosophy part of your resume that says, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I'm about. This is what I'm good at. Yeah, right? think of I'm either a fit or I'm not. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm either a fit or I'm not, right? I kind of like, you know, this is me. Do I fit? If if not, I guess you put me in the reject pile. But if I fit, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be at the top of that pile. And I'm going to yeah. be sitting in your seat in five years. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, be very afraid. I'm coming for you. It depends on what the job <laughs> is, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, consider, always think about the um, the resume as a reverse funnel. We're going to get really specific. Oh, yes. This is my target. I am pursuing a, um, uh, let me think of something. I'm, we'll just yeah. do something. Begin so, with the end in mind, right? You know, where, you know, where do you see yourself going in your career? Target. Right? Sales yeah, target. Yep. You know, don't have to have an objective sentence. You just have to be clear. I really like, I am such a target freak for resumes that I will say, um, uh, engineer two, at Lockheed Martin at the top of my resume as my target, you know, goal, target. And then they get it and they're like, damn, this resume is just for me. Um, so mm -hmm. very specific. And then that paragraph reflects why you are the right person for the job, paragraph or bullets. And then your keywords are what your target, what that job requires. You're showing that you have experience in these areas, but yep, I can check this off. This person has this, this, this. And then we usually put education further down on a resume for someone with career experience already. Right. But as we're, so as our funnel is getting bigger, now we're getting into the job descriptions and your traditional job seeker has experience in their field. So we're doing reverse chronological, meaning most recent position gets listed first. We maybe go back 10, maybe 15 okay. years. We don't want to date ourselves. Even if we have great experience, it's really important that you don't put all the dates from your entire 
maybe 20, 30 year work history. So I should go back to like 1977 that I worked for McDonald's and stuff like that. I mean, that's kind you know, of there are exceptions to every rule. I did a resume for someone. Um, I only help family now. Um, <laughs> but I did a resume for, I helped a family member with a resume and we wanted to play up experience from the nineties. So we did a, um, uh, additional relevant experience section, um, after the chronological where I just included that with no dates. Sometimes I'll put number of years and in resumes for dummies, I go into, cause no two people are the same. And we want to say it. everybody's got this traditional. Yes, um path but they don't and sometimes we have to get really creative trying to balance how these ats systems read a resume and the fact that we're trying to play up a career change for somebody who wants to do what they did 10 years ago or somebody who had a stroke and was out of work for 14 years and is now trying to get back in and then yes. some rules go out the, out the window but the one i would always stress to you is you got to have some dates and you should always, always, when you're trying to decide, does this belong on my resume? You should think, will it when help then, me or will it potentially harm me? And more is not always better. More can say mm -hmm. uh, you're old, <laughs> which, hey, I'm in my 50s. I don't think old is a bad thing. But if your interviewer is in their 20s, you know, they're going to look at a 20 year work history and be like, this dude's old. And yeah. you just don't need that. We're seasoned. We're not old. Yeah. Here's a good question for you. So <laughs> speaking of digital, can AI help with resume writing these days? It can. Yes, it absolutely can. Like I am, um, I am very big on um, using AI like BARD or chat GPT for professional resume writers. Um, and I, why I'm saying for professional resume writers is because if you don't, know how to get the words out of your own mouth onto paper to sell yourself, then yes, uh, AI can make what you said sound better, but it's not going to make it any less empty. Your goal is right. when you go into your positions to talk about them, and usually our, our big focus is on our most recent position because it's typically the most relevant, you got a couple goals. One is you want to set the stage. Um, what did you, like, in other words, think about how these two things work for you. Uh, on one resume, the guy is talking about all his accomplishments and they sound really impressive. Oh my gosh, he tripled sales. He built them to the number two company, all these great results. But this guy over here tells you how when he came in, this uh, facility was ranked number 53 out of 57. They were looking at closing their doors. They were struggling with mature project products and an oversaturated market. And nobody said they could sa be saved. And he brought them all those results. Now, which story is going to get somebody most excited? Honestly, the first story is good, but you got lots of jaded people going, yeah, anybody could make it to the top three with an unlimited budget or an unlimited sales team. You got to put some foundational story in. Mm -hmm. So you're looking to put some foundational story in. You're looking to not just list responsibilities, but focus on challenges, actions, and results whenever you possibly can. Yep. And challenges are important, right? Because you know, like you were saying, right? You know, it sets the stage. It uh, it 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 helps draw the the um, hopefully the eventual human reader into. Okay, now I I understand the scenario that that person was, was dealing with. And, you know, just looking at the end results is like, yeah, you can get jaded with that. But, you know, if you understand, well, this person really, you know, had some, had some struggles that they had to overcome and they were still able to achieve those, you know, eye watering results. You know, that is like, wow. Yeah. That person's probably going to succeed in, in, in any kind of challenge I, I, I put them in. Right. So that's, that, that's good stuff. And think of challenges, though. Be sure to think of challenges not as just in challenges that you know you faced, but that challenge action. We call it a car story. Challenge action result. Action result. And there's other acronyms, but yeah. um, the car story is literally where you say, you know, I had to do this. I did it this way, and it resulted in that. Um, and a lot of times when people are struggling with this, because what I have found is. 
you know, so many people take for granted what they do. They could be like stellar, you know, employees, stellar professionals, but they think everybody else isn't using their sick days and everybody else is going the extra mile. And I have to say, I need you to look when you can't think of any accomplishments, any challenges, any improvements. I need you to look at just the things you may have done that made your job run smoother, faster, you know, what did you create just for you? If there's nothing that's this big scale, oh my gosh, I got an award, you know, or I mm -hmm. saved 30% or I helped us jump. They're not right. all these giant gold nuggets, but they are still worth something when you show somebody you're focused on the kind of bottom line items, because at the end of the day, people hire not thinking that they're going to get an expense. They're hiring to get a return on their investment. How are you going to make asset, it money? Yeah. Right. Yeah. People. And one of the things that we teach in my communications class is that companies want to give people money to work for them. And people don't think of that. They think, well, I'm going to get a job. No, you, you're, you're the asset that company wants you. They want to give you a job. Why not give them something that says, Hey, we want you yeah. for 60 grand. Yeah. Wow, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Just got to sell yeah. you incorporated to them. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and like you were saying with the, with the AI, right. It, don't use AI to produce the final version of your resume. If you have that blank page syndrome, right. AI can give, can spark some ideas, right. It's like, Oh, that sounds pretty good. That gives me something to work with. And right. And it's like, you know, maybe take this, this job accomplishment and say, Hey, chat GPT, can you, can you phrase this in a cars format? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that that's what you can use AI for, but you know, don't ask it to write your resume for you. That's going to end horribly for you. Yeah, yeah. Just use it for the prompts. Yeah. Right. And there's no reason to be challenged by a blank page. You can, uh, does your company have a job description? And then like when I was working with job seekers, I would be like, okay, I see you're responsible for this. Tell me about it. Yep. You know, give me numbers. Tell me what you did. Did you find ways to do it better? If your company doesn't have a job description, go search for your job title online and you know, you'll see a million job descriptions and it'll make you think of and even give you language that you're like, ooh, this is sexy. I want to use this um, in my own resume. But right. It, there's all these jumping off points to help you go, okay, I just need to fill in what I did that was special in this area. Yep. And speaking of searching, right? So you you know, if you were trying to become in, an engineer too at Lockheed Martin, make sure your resume makes it look like you understand what Lock Me Lockheed Martin does, right? You know, <laughs> make sure that you've looked at their website and said, you know, you have some understanding of what business they're in, what products they produce, and everything like that, and reflect that in your resume so it's not generic, right? I'm just Joe looking for a, a generic job at generic company, right? Put, put some effort, put some research into your job search and make sure that you, you know, you understand yourself and you understand the position you're looking for at that company when yeah. you submit that resume. And so much of it is just there for the picking, right? And the job. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. yeah. The job descriptions today are so rich with our philosophy and what we're seeking and your responsibilities and the perfect person is, I mean, I give you yep. the tool. They give you the keywords. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Spoon feedback. Exactly. That gets that sensation of <clears throat> how could he be or she be more perfect? Yeah. All right. Is all the HR. All though? What? If you're too, let's say you're really good at reflecting back what they wrote in their job description. Can that backfire at all? I mean, if well, it's just too perfect. Not if it's true. I mean, okay. I would ah, it's yeah, if it's true, yeah. If, if it's true. Yeah. I mean, I don't ever want to see somebody put something in a resume that no. they can't stand behind. Um, no. We're going to talk about stuff for new grads here in a second. Um, I would never suggest someone plagiarizes back the exact language, <laughs> except for paste, when you're doing paste, your yeah. keywords. Yeah, keywords. You need Absolutely. to have the same keywords if you qualify in those areas. Yeah, right. Definitely. All right. So you mentioned uh, new grads. Okay. So new grads and career changers. Um, first of all, you know, all those years I spent in, you know, writing a placement program, I would hear over and over again. Um, but I haven't done it. 
I don't have anything to put on my resume. I don't have any experience. And, uh, you know, I would be like, uh, well, did you, did you do simulations in these classrooms? Did you have to do X, Y, and Z? Did tell me what you know about this? And, and they'd be able to talk about it. I'd be like, see, you, you have experience. You just don't have paid experience. So um, one of the things I always do, so, so your summary is going to look a little bit different. You still got a target. Your summary may look a little bit different because you don't have like, you know, job accomplishments, but you might, because I've run into a lot of new graduates who've done cool things they're taken for granted in, in their lives up to this point, And they're not realizing how they can, they can spin them around. So you know what? Let me start with a quick story. Is that okay? We love story. Oh yeah, I thought that's what you were giving an example. Yes. No, yeah, I want to go into the story. I was like, yeah, I, I want to go. Yeah, okay. So, um, many years ago, I had an opportunity to work with a young man who had started with a bachelor's in pre-med and switched to a bachelor's of business. And he came to me and he's like, I, you know, I, I want to go for a sales position. And I'm like, have you thought about, you know, pharmaceutical or medical device sales too? And he's like, oh, I've got a friend who's going to help me with that one. I just want one for straight sales. And I'm like, if you're going to make this investment, I want to write a version for that as well. He's like, all right, whatever. Okay. So his jobs, so he had the degree. His work history was limited to summer jobs. He had been a um, a uh, a first mate on a, a fishing boat. He had been a lifeguard at the beach, and he had been a um, I can't think of what they call it, but the the guys who push the gurneys in the hospital. The gurney pusher. The gurney pusher. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, I'm, I'm asking him what I always do with new graduates is I get a list of their core courses. And this is what I tell them to do too. We get a list of your core courses. First, we rule out anything you hated. We're not even going to waste our time on that. But then we're going to look at each of your classes. And as we're doing our brain dump, I want to know, what did you learn? Did you do any papers? Were there any projects? Was there hands-on experience? Tell me about it. Get all the specifics down. So now I know what they know and what they did in this unpaid environment. We do the same thing with the jobs. I'm not worried about them speaking in the language of their target. I'm just getting their stories. What'd you do? Why'd you do it? How'd you do it? Were there any improvements? Did you make people happy? You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. did you go above and beyond? Did you have any special projects? Yeah. Um, and we pick through everything. So in his case, I keep eyeballing as I'm talking to him down on the bottom of his resume, he's got that he won a fishing tournament when he was 15 years old. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, is this even going to stay on the resume? Because right. who cares unless you go interview with people who are super big on fishing. But because I believe, especially for new grads and career changers, that we are looking at a puzzle in which we must pick up each piece and examine it and go, it goes right there. I asked him about that fishing tournament. And he said, yeah, I was the youngest person to win that fishing tournament. And I'm like, what'd you win? So this is what I call the going down the rabbit hole process that you can <laughs> do with yourself. What'd you win? Oh, I won a boat. Oh my gosh, you won a boat. What did you do with the boat? Well, my dad said I could only keep the boat if um, I could afford to house it at a local marina. And I'm like, did you do that with one of the jobs you have? because those were just summer jobs. And he's like, no, actually, I started a, um, I started a charter business um, <laughs> where I would take people out. Okay, what kinds of people did you take out? And how did you find them? And he's like, well, my dad works in the medical profession. So I was taking out um, a lot of surgeons and physicians. <laughs> See where this is going, right? You know, uh -huh. <laughs> got to. So I'm like, okay. And I'm like, and how did that go? You know? So again, it's, we're just asking like really basic questions here to dig out the gold. And he's like, oh, it was great. They would refer their friends. I was mm -hmm. able to get the boat, uh, blah, blah, blah. So suddenly I realized this kid's brand, he's competitive, he's driven, 
He is, you know, out of the box. He is enterprising and entrepreneurial. I he went after the big fish. You went after the big yeah. fish, right? So yep. um, his that's important in sales. Get the big fish. Yeah. Get the get the whales. So yeah, so his resume became a blending of um, this, you know, driven entrepreneurial, enterprising, get it done, make it happen spirit coupled with a solid foundation um, in the medical profession with a, a lengthy contact list of, of you know, healthcare yep. providers and all these courses he'd taken in business and, and in um, pre-med that we could play up as well. He ended up becoming a uh, cardiothoracic device salesman Wow. salesperson as his first job out of a four-year degree and that doesn't happen that's no crazy. that doesn't happen that's, that's, crazy. that's, that's just he amazing did, he didn't pay his dues in pharmaceutical sales first and he went right into a hundred fifty thousand dollar a year job just killing it and it was yeah, all because we looked at every piece and we played up things you don't traditionally play up you know, that makes me think of a question that I asked my students on the very first day, the very first thing they do before I even get into the syllabus is everybody has to interview somebody else and introduce them to the class. And the toughest question by far is what is something unique about you that's not too private? Yeah. And I would say 80 to 90 percent of the students go nothing. And it's like, well, I have 18 tattoos. Okay, that's unique. Does anybody else have 18 tattoos? And 12 hands go up. Like, okay, what else you got? <laughs> I go, I'm a twin. Any other twins? Yeah. Uh, okay. Lefties? No, no. Come on. I need. Mean, and they don't know. That's this yeah. a story. Just this. My, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this story this fall in a couple of weeks when we do class. Yeah, it's we just, just take it for granted. Yeah. yeah. I have three key tips I would like to share for this population. Oh, do we have gotta time? Hear that. Gotta hear it. Okay. Yep. So. Um, First of all, when we talked about these three, these keywords and having two or three, you know, columns of bullets of keywords near the top of the resume, all you have to do, because normally we're thinking of them as areas of expertise. So my right. new grad workaround is you have a little title above it that says um, uh, knowledge, skills and training or key areas of knowledge, skills and training. It is an umbrella that lets you put things you never did for pay in there as things you have knowledge of or training in. So that is one of my favorite ways to help new grads and career changers get in the door is to play up what matters from what they've learned and maybe touched on um, to target the job they're going after. Um, the second thing is I see when, when new grads and career changers attempt to play up things from their academic experience to show relevance, they almost always do it under education. Well, I have a different philosophy on that. Yes, the degree or certificate or whatever should go under education, but instead of calling a section professional experience or work history, I call it experience. And I will put, um, we'll just go with our engineer again, I'll put mechanical engineer student comma FT for full time, Florida State University, date to date. And I will treat that sucker just like a job description, but I will talk about um, the things they learned and the projects and papers they did. So we're you know, psychologically implanting it as this is experience I have versus here's some classes I took. That, right. you know, it just sounds better. Yeah. That, so, yeah. It's practical I'll, application. Yeah, if they haven't worked in the field, I will shove that right into the timeline. Um, and then the third thing that I think is critical is when you're playing up other experience, you need to really work hard by other experience. I mean, stuff that's not specifically in the industry, like you were a babysitter or you uh, were a bagger at a grocery store or, you know, these things that aren't right on the money or you were um, captain of the football team or these different things that a lot of students bring to the table. You need to, as much as humanly possible, do what I call cross the bridge 
and speak to the employer in their language. So a simple example would be yes. somebody who's, and I know I'm not giving a simple new graduate example, but just for a, the first thing that comes to my mind is somebody who was doing um, medical sales now wants to do um, IT tech sales. Instead of saying, I sold cardiothoracic medical devices to surgeons and you know anesthesiologists. You would say, um, I sold high tech devices valued at upwards of 500K to C-level decision makers. So mm -hmm. you get that by looking at your course descriptions, looking at the job description, thinking about, I did this. How does it translate? That's as simple as a T-chart where you're like, and here's an example I did with a student one time. She was like, I drove a bus. How is being a bus driver for kids ever going to help me be successful in a medical office? And I said, all right, let's think about it. And we put all her responsibilities down. And then my quick capstone of just showing you how it goes over is like, well, let me see here. All right. So each day you wrangled 40 to 50 um, people with short attention spans um, from A to Z without any quality issues. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. Any complaints. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no deaths, no injuries. No deaths, yeah. no injuries. <laughs> so, so, yeah. And so, our Aren't senior executives just basically children anyway, right? So it's the same thing. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you wouldn't say, yeah, you wouldn't say, I drove a bus and took kids from A to Z. You would be like, uh, managed a high stress environment with, you know, 40 to 50 incumbents. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was a high stressed environment care management facilitator of 40 to 50 low attention span, small people. Small people, yeah. I was a bus driver. <laughs> yeah, so cross the bridge. Don't yeah. talk about the, you know, if you did kitchen, and Troy has access to these examples that he can share with you um, from his CDI membership. But, you know, it's like, you, you don't talk about the fact that you um, helped clients design kitchens at Home Depot if you're going to go be, if you're trying to get a project manager job instead you've looked at enough project management descriptions for jobs and you've looked at what you learned and you're able to say um uh, worked closely uh, uh through the project management life cycle to establish all milestones on projects valued at 10 to a hundred thousand dollars blah 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 um so you don't say yeah. design kitchens With Say. Yeah, with high levels of customer satisfaction and, you know, that kind exactly. of stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, it's making me think of a, a live we did with Troy that um, I'll leave the link in the description for these two uh, on internships. You don't take the internship that has nothing to do or is something that you have zero interest in doing in the future. Very, very important. It's because, oh, this will look great on my yeah. resume that I did something for three months. Yeah. Yeah, but if it's the experience has to be relevant, has yeah. to be relevant, has to be relevant to where you want to go and has to be relevant to what you actually want to do. Yep. Yeah, we had a good conversation on that one. Yeah. <laughs> we could probably go, Troy and I just said, we could go on for 30, no, 30 hours. Not just minimum. about anything, but yes, you make your yeah. life much easier if it's relevant to begin with. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so speaking of relevance, this I mean, this is a really complex area that could, uh, I, you know, they don't really teach this in college. They teach to do your resume, but they don't teach all this stuff that you're doing. And this is one of those self-study things where they just got to get the book in and go. Now, I was right. researching your book because I wanted to get a copy of it digitally. I want to get an audio book so I can do it while I'm on the treadmill. And, I, and there's no audio books. Why is that? Have you ever thought about that? Oh, I don't have control over that sort of thing with uh, resumes for dummies. Oh, um, well, Troy gave me a good answer. Troy, what was your take on that one? We So here, we'll fill you in on this one. Okay. So why why is it resume for dummies strictly an audiobook? Well, I can answer that too, but I'll let yeah. you know. Yeah, right. Well, I mean it's yeah, well, Lars' answer is probably going to be a better one than mine. Yeah, of course. But but <laughs> but you know, the it's the you, you have to put the ideas and the concepts that are in the book into practice 
And it's not just something you can just absorb and say, okay, well now, you know, now I've listened to the book. I know how to write a resume. And it's like, no, you got to do it. Right. And that's hard to do when you're on a treadmill or if you're driving down the highway. Right. So maybe that's part of the challenge, but you know, Laura, what do you, what do you think? Resumes are visual. You know, we haven't gone into because we're not in a platform here where I can show layouts and whatnot, but right. Resumes are or do we have the time <laughs> when we talk about <laughs> advertising and marketing a product. That's not about, you know, just left justifying everything you have to say. Mm -hmm. There are all these subtle nuances that go into not only writing a resume the right way so that it's interesting, but if it's blocky, if you've used half inch margins all around and nine point font, nobody's going to read it. Ooh. Yeah, too, too dense, oh, right? Geez, the black, the like, black page, oh. right? So a lot about resume writing is visual. And I think like... I understand listening to an audiobook that's conceptual or fictional or autobiographical, but when it comes into a how to, you got to be able to see things. What is she talking about when she says, you're going to center this and this should be over here and here's how you're yeah. going to hone down. Uh, it would be so chaotic to try yeah. to do it. And how, how to, how to, draw the reader's eye to the right spot so they see this first and then that second and you know there there's there's a psycho psychology about that right and yeah. you know it is about the presentation yes. and we've got, right. i think there's three chapters of samples i have two chapters one is by um why are there three chapters i guess i should look at the book uh, one cha one of the three chapters is all um, re award-winning resumes by professional resume writers. And then there's a chapter, I think it's on levels, and then there's a chapter on industries. And those are all resumes done by professional resume writers, each of which I have vetted as being Laura quality acceptable. So, <laughs> Laura quality acceptable. I like very that. high yeah. standards yeah. because, you know, when you have the top, having the top placement rates one would think oh that has there's so many facets to that when i was hired for that university they i had only ever written resumes and documents i had no interview job search any of that experience except my own personal and as they're shaking my hand they're like so have you ever done any of this before well, i already got the job they've seen my resume <laughs> and i'm like nope and they're like, well, you write a damn good, this is their wording for real. They, you write a damn good resume, you'll learn the rest. And I jumped in to learn it. But at the end of the day, it was really what set my students apart. Yes, they could interview really well and they were dressed right and they knew how to find jobs. But I sent them on a lot of interviews because I was a placement you know, department. But it was all about the fact that their resumes sold them. Resume mm -hmm. has to sell, and that is not just about words on paper. Um, so it's a challenging thing that you may have to do, and you may opt not to do it yourself. Yeah, and that's where professionals come in. And here's a link up on the screen here for careerdirectors.com job seekers that, Laura, you're in charge of this, I'm guessing. Yeah, CDI, like we said earlier, is a global professional association of resume writers and job seekers, um, resume writers and career coaches. I don't work with job seekers. Uh, I make the people who work with job seekers better. So I'm training and certifying them. But we have this great section on our website dedicated to job seekers. There are blog posts on like 18 different categories of career change, career management, resume writing, online identity. Um, there are free books, reports little podcasty things, little, little audio clips, you name it. It's probably there to help you out. And if you decide you need help, we've got a great directory of the industry's top resume writers, career coaches, and other career professionals from around the globe that you can search and contact. Wow, that's great. And I'm sure you have some freebies in there too. And what we will do, we will have those links down in the description. We could go on for hours and hours and days and days, which would be great. <laughs> but I think we're going to call it quits at this point. Anyhow, go check in the description for the freebies. You don't want to procrastinate on this. And while you're there, check out my free course on how to stop procrastination. It's a mini course. You can get through it pretty quick and it will change your life nearly immediately. Okay, but don't 
wait, do it now. Don't procrastinate. Laura, thank get you your so quick win, your people. Time. Yeah, get your quick win. Go do this. Start. And even if you're not job seeking, Laura, is it a good idea to start your resume once you get hired? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm glad you brought that up as a never as a, stop. It's never going to close on this one. <laughs> Listen, folks, um, 20 years ago, 20, yeah, 23 years ago, CDI um, registered September is update your resume month. And we did that because we found just far too many people getting a job and they just coast and they don't realize that when you get tapped for another opportunity, external company, even internal, they might be looking for a resume, external, definitely looking for a resume. You're not ready. Are you going to miss that window? Could it have been your dream job? You go in for a review, most powerful technique I've ever seen a job seeker, have, not a job seeker, a career manager have was to go into their review with their boss and go, oh, I've updated my resume. So you can see everything I've brought to the company in the last year. That scares their pants off. Um, <laughs> I'm coming for you. I, yep. I, I people be told, I had no idea how much you do for this company. Let me see about getting you a bigger raise. So it is in your best interest to always be documenting what you're doing, new classes you've taken, new certificates you've earned, new achievements. Keep it documented. Update that resume, if not regularly, at least once a year. And we pick September because most kids are back to school by the beginning of September. Um, we're not quite to the busy, chaotic period of the holidays. So now is the time to career caretake for yourself. It's two months away. Make sure you get your resume updated so that you're always ready. That's great. Laura, thank you so much again. Troy, thanks as always. And me, thanks. My well, I'm just yep. here. Thank so. you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not updating my resume, so <laughs> well, maybe I should. We'll see. All right, Laura, yeah. we'll have you back. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you online soon. Take care.